Well, welcome everyone, and uh, a special welcome to our special guest uh, today, Dr. Chitinda uh, Charma, who is the CEO of AMTZ, and he'll explain what that is a little bit for us in a moment. And, and Jatin is also the author of a recently published book uh, called Med in, in Lockdown. And that's what really catalyzed this uh, casual conversation uh, to get some insights into AMTZ before, uh, during, and, and as we emerge from uh, the, the, the COVID lockdowns that we've all uh, been exposed to. So Jatinda has achieved uh, amazing things uh, in terms of AMTZ and in, in the other areas, but uh, we'll focus on AMTZ today. And so, so welcome, Jitinda. And uh, let me just start by asking, can you just give us a little bit of background about AMTZ for our audience? Uh, so, so happy to connect with all of you. Uh, AMTZ is a science city, which uh, endeavors to bring out innovations in medical science but not just in the form of publication or patents, but in large volume productions. And therefore, uh, when I set up the first health technology center for the Ministry of Health in New Delhi, and we realized that India is reeling under an import dependence of over 95% on medical technology, we realized that there needs to be a powerhouse which should be able to produce what India needs uh, in medical technology, right from a, a heart valve to an MRI, uh, from a ventilator to an oxygen concentrator. And so I set up this science city, which is spread across an area of eight miles uh, on the east coast of India in a city called Vizag. And MTZ uh, is, is, is a mix of validation and prototyping laboratory a mix of high productivity uh, industrial centers, which are our factories, and an institute called Kalam Institute of Health Technology, uh, which is the central government of India's you know, policy support institute for medical technology program and policy matters. And we could incubate these institutional strengths all in one place, and that's AMTZ. It's now officially world's largest medical devices zone with more than 110 companies, R&D centers and partners in our campus. And what is most interesting is that phase one of this zone in which we have been blessed and lucky to have many of you physically a uh, couple of times, uh, we were built uh, in record time of 342 days. And therefore, AMTZ signifies a, a convergence of professional talents. It signifies a powerhouse of life-saving technology production. And it also signifies speed and scale. And that is AMTZ. Great. Thanks, uh, Jitinda. I know that it's a, a dynamic place. It's an exciting place uh, to visit and to work. In fact, my last visit, my last international visit overseas was to FISAG. Uh, all that time ago, uh, and I hope my my first one back out of Australia will also be to to buy Zag as we as we go forward. And I know from experience at that time that uh, things were really really cranking ahead uh, at AMTZ before uh, COVID hit. And I'd just be interested in in your reflections on you know because we we all were affected differently. You know what was the immediate impact uh, of COVID on AMTZ? So uh, the immediate impact of COVID on AMTZ was expected to be as it is to anyone else. But we have this knack of converting every challenge into an opportunity. So first thing we did at AMTZ was to take, take an essential service status for the whole campus so that we are not locked down or shut down. That really helped administratively. The second uh, impact was to quickly uh, uh, establish a large number of partnerships with research groups and manufacturing groups to identify what India needed and, and to scale up the production of life-saving goods as quickly as we can. And the third was to identify our bottlenecks and challenges on spare parts, components, raw materials, 
that would come from rest of the places in the world who are also facing lockdown in a way which is uh, matched with our production capacities. But after identifying if we see that the short term solution is to get these raw materials and components into AMTZ for production, our long term strategy was to set up component manufacturing raw material integration at AMTZ itself. So the impact of lockdown on AMTZ was, was supposed to be as it, it was elsewhere, but we use these three strategies to convert our challenges into opportunities. Yeah. Uh, and, and on a very, very lighter note, uh, 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 we did not stop even for 30 minutes during two years of lockdown. Uh, we did get impacted uh, 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 in, in small ways. One of those small impacts was, uh, for example, AMTZ consumes about 15,000 cups of tea and coffee in a day because we are a campus where thousands work, over 5,000 people. Now, uh, uh, milk stopped for two days, the milk supply, and we didn't know what to do because our scientists and engineer, engineers needed coffee. Uh, um, we did manage for those two days to get milk support from nearby dairy, but then we realized that this is, uh, this, this is not the way we can, we can uh, uh, fight our challenges. Uh, we created a cow farm inside AMTZ to have our own dairy. We, in the same way as we created an oxygen sensor and printed circuit board assembly line to feed oxygen sensors for the oxygen concentrators we make, we created a dairy farm to supply milk for coffee. So AMTZ in some way could neutralize the challenges by converting all of them into great opportunities. Yeah, that, that's an amazing story. Um, you, you, and you mentioned it there and you certainly talk about it in the book, uh, Made in Lockdown, uh, about how you got so much support from other uh, parts of the country to help AMTZ to pivot. Uh, it must have been an incredible feeling when all of those planets lined up like that. Yes, incredible feeling, but also feeling of great responsibility because each of these partners that actually uh, lined up to support us in turn needed tremendous support themselves. So we had phone calls that would never stop asking ventilators or oxygen concentrators. And, and, and you really felt uh, professionally and, and, and uh, morally obliged to do your best. Uh, but I think AMTZ team did wonders to achieve those targets of supplies. Yeah. yeah. Was there any particularly challenging bit of the supply chain uh, that, that took longer than some other bits maybe to, to get in order? Yeah, uh, uh, we really got uh, 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 into a tight spot uh, uh, for supply uh, to receive the supplies of oxygen sensors, right. which were not made in India. They were actually made in China uh, and, and uh, most parts of the world, all parts of the world were under lockdown. But then we could quickly, uh, and I mentioned that in my book as well, we quickly got connected to um, uh, another company in the US, and we could set up a line here at AMTZ. Uh, and therefore, uh, while there were bottlenecks in supply, we kept resolving these bottlenecks one after another. And when we look back today, um, at the peak of COVID, India tested 1.2 million COVID RT PCR tests in a day. At the peak of COVID, 1.2 million tests in a day. Wow. Out of 1.2 million tests in a day, AMTZ had the capacity to supply 1.1 million tests every day. Well, and, and I think that that gave us huge confidence because we could nearly, nearly supply just from one campus, 100% of a country as big as India's RT-PCR needs. Yeah, that's that, that's uh, an amazing ability to, to pivot. And as, as you mentioned, of course, uh, AMTZ was already famous for technology development and uh, uh, pulling research and development together to produce translatable products. Uh, but to, to be able to turn that around and have the real emphasis on manufacturing uh, when it was needed, that, that's a, a, it's a, an amazing achievement in a short period of time. And, and I think you would agree, probably couldn't be achieved in that period of time in normal times. Absolutely. 
and, and, and there are reasons uh, why, why you are so correct. Uh, if you look at an oxygen concentrator today, uh, oxygen concentrators were consumed even without COVID. They were used widely globally, but nobody indigenized an air compressor, uh, an oil-free 1 HP air compressor that used in an oxygen concentrator. And it's this supply chain problems uh, and the huge obligation to deliver that made us indigenize a lot of components. We were able to produce almost a thousand concentrators a day. I mean, nobody across the country who ever asked uh, actually was refused. Uh, and therefore, convergence of our strengths, uh, production with technology development, indeed uh, came out to be a very critical uh, strength that we could showcase. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, and, I, and I think those non-technical issues and that demand uh, bringing everyone together, I, I, I really like the, the bit in your book around the, the command strategy uh, and, and how those non-technical elements were just as important as the technical, technical developments. Yes, and, and, and uh, besides the non-technical elements, we also have to look at um, steps which went right uh, because uh, of, of the universal power backing uh, those, those, those visions yep. and, and those plans. I mean, I can never forget how accidental was my meeting, the, the head of World Bank, for example, uh, which I have documented in my book. Yep. Uh, and, and these things really happen when you least expect. They happen for good of everyone. And they happen because uh, the, the universal strength works, uh, it becomes a tail behind, uh, 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 you know, uh, the headwinds become tailwinds uh, to push you further in your role as a, as a social change agent. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, I, I think you're absolutely right. But, it, and, and of course, uh, it, and you, you said it there, that that collective vision is, is so important. Uh, and, and something like COVID really focuses everybody's mind on the outcome rather than the, you know, the, the way they would prefer to get there. It's just the critical fact that we have to get there and we have to get there together. Quite a, quite a different environment, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think the culture of AMTZ even before COVID was a very go-getting culture. I mean, we built the campus pretty fast. We stitched our partnerships very fast. We could, you know, we could give in our best at every occasion which allowed us to uh, further uh, consolidate that culture at AMTZ uh, when actually COVID came. I still remember the day uh, India declared complete lockdown was a day of festival. It was uh, a national holiday, um, uh, at least in the state where, where we live, uh, we are based, it was a declared holiday. And I still remember coming to office on that day at 9.30 in the morning and all my center heads and scientists were already there. And we had our first meeting on a, on a holiday on the day of first lockdown, where every car, every, every, every bike uh, that's coming from the city to the office was, was staff checked. But then because we had an essential service pass, we were let go. We reached the campus. We did one meeting and then we never looked back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, well, that's... Yeah, I, I could sense that spirit about AMTZ when, when I visited. And uh, I think that wherever you go, where you have that positivity and collaborative nature, it, you can almost feel it. And uh, you definitely feel it at, at AMTZ. Just one other thing on, on your book before the last question. And you, you talk about the five pillars that underpin any healthcare system. And one of those is, is medical technologies. And... Um, we both understand just how rapidly changing medical technologies are. Uh, you know, how, how does an organization like AMTZ, you know, prioritize the adoption of those changes, uh, prioritize the, the implementation of new medical technologies? That's an excellent question and an excellent question because it has far reaching consequences. Uh, if adoption is not done, the efforts put in technology development and production do not give best results. And there, therefore, uh, while we were setting up AMTZ, I also created this body called Kalam Institute, 
which is in the name of our president, a late president, Dr. Kalam, who was himself a scientist, a pioneering one. Now, Kalam Institute actually became the uh, uh, technology policy uh, adoption assessment center. Uh, so Kalam Institute works as the project analysis unit for the government of India on medical technology. And it also works as a health technology assessment center for medical technologies for the Ministry of Health. What happens is when I innovate a piece of machine, uh, the Kalam Institute does the assessment of whether this machine has clinical effectiveness, cost effectiveness, does it meet the contextual, local, social, ethical parameters, and then calculates a budget impact analysis. Now, when the cost effectiveness and budget impact analysis results along with contextual and social factors, are presented along with the clinical benefits of the technology to the Ministry of Health, and option becomes easier. Yep. And the reason it really works is because Kalam Institute being a separate legal entity, there is no conflict of interest. And therefore, while AMTZ endeavors to produce and develop technologies, Kalam Institute provides a very unbiased, rigorous, peer-reviewed assessment on the technology to the Ministry of Health to facilitate adoption. And I think that is the real key. If we could set up centers where development could happen along with assessment and go as one, uh, one support and join with each other to the Ministry of Health, I think uh, it would be much easier to adopt technologies. Yeah, I, I, I think that integration is, is critical. I totally agree with you. And, and just in, in closing, uh, you mentioned towards the end of the book that you know, the real impact of COVID and the, uh, the convergence of activities and the pivoting of activities at a AMTZ probably haven't been seen yet, but it will be into the future uh, where you will be able to look back and see how that accelerated the ability uh, of India to create a real med tech industry because of the absolute necessity to do so at the time. Uh, it, so that makes for some pretty exciting times ahead, I think. Absolutely. Uh, it, and, and we are already seeing results uh, uh, from uh, since last one and a half years, 18 months, we have had more than 35 new uh, partners that have come into AMTZ, almost one every two weeks. Uh, today, we have two companies that make MRIs because we set up in phase one, the superconducting MRI magnet technology center. We have, we have a new partner, which is uh, getting into plasma derived products. Mm, or they, um, that those, those medical products that are made from um, IgG, IgM or immunoglobulins. Mm, uh, we have new partners that are working on heart valves. So we are already seeing the propelling progressive pace at which uh, AMTZ is taking India forward in medical technology, uh, consolidating the achievements which we had in the COVID phase. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, uh, thanks, uh, Jitinda. Uh, congratulations on everything that AMTZ has achieved uh, before COVID, uh, during COVID, and, and the amazing things it's been to achieve uh, as we emerge from, from COVID. I think all of us around the world have learned uh, a lot about the ability to work together when it's critical to work together uh, and how much more productive uh, that can be. So thanks for joining us today and then talking with us and to the, the audience. And, and as I say, I hope my, my next trip after two and a half years on the ground, my last one was to Visag. And so hopefully my next one will also be to, to Visag. So thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity and we look forward to hosting you. And thank you for giving um, my book, The Made in Lockdown, a place in your library. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. Bye-bye.